Welcome back to the Happy Camper, coming to you from the beautiful mountains of southwest Montana. Today we're back at our sponsor's dealership, Rocky Mountain RV in Butte, Montana. They're allowing us to take a look through their inventory again today, and uh, we've picked out this little uh, Coachman uh, 238BHS. This is a new offering from Coachman this year. It's got a very interesting twist on a short bunk trailer. Gives us a little bit more versa versatility than what we've had in the past. We do appreciate Rocky Mountain for uh, allowing us to use their inventory for our reviews and let you guys come out and see uh, see some units without uh, without actually having to put boots on the ground. Anytime that it makes sense, we really appreciate you helping out uh, our sponsors. Their ro website is RockyMTNRV.com. And as always, I will link to this particular unit's uh, listing on their website um, on the on the video description. So you can take a look down there below and get uh, everything, including pricing and and everything on there these guys they, they do a great job with their website of uh, making sure they have pictures they do use our videos on the listings as well uh, and they make sure there's pricing and everything so you can shop from home and get a lot of your homework done before you come out to the dealership because they have you know there's 12 acres out here and there's 200 plus rvs at any given time so it can get kind of confusing so it's nice to be able to look through a few things at home and get a good feel for what's here at the lot before you come out um, and if you do uh, decide you want to come out walk around these guys do have an open yard policy you can go out and wander around their trailers everything's unlocked everything has these price tags hanging in them like this they do the uh, the MSRP sheet here up on the top that tells you all the options and what the factory says it should sell for and then of course down below it's their sale pricing so it couldn't be more transparent it's it's very easy to uh, come out and shop with these guys and they're just all you know salt of the earth people everybody that works here lives the rv lifestyle just lives it and breathes it much much in the same way that the people that do uh, coachman rv uh, they they just they're an iconic brand in our industry they've been on the market over 50 years uh, a few years back coachman was purchased by Forest River, uh, Coachman had gotten themselves in a little bit of financial trouble. Forest River stepped in, bought the brand, allowed it to run out of its original plants and um, and truly with its own completely own team. And it kept a lot of the uh, the fabric of what Coachman has always been. And they're a company that really pays attention to detail. Now they have Forest River backing them, so they have the Forest River buying power, the second largest RV manufacturer in the world is backing Coachman, so they've really got the best of both worlds now. These guys, I've met most of the people um, from Coachman, some of the plant workers, as well as the production team and the um, and the sales staff, of course, out there. And and again, they're just into they're into RVs. They, they live and breathe this lifestyle. They pay attention to their customer and their owner forum to make sure that when they're designing a new unit, they are changing and tweaking little things to make sure the customers are happy. So let's get started on this unit today. This is the 238BHS. I'm going to go through the technical data right here at the top of the video so we can uh, get a, a good idea of what uh, where this thing falls as far as weights and measures go. Uh, this, of course, is a 2020 uh, Freedom Express Ultralight. This is in the Ultralight series. Freedom Express has three series. So they do the uh, Liberty Edition, which is their bigger top-end units that are a little fancier, um, and definitely bigger models, bigger, heavier models. The Ultralight series, which is kind of the middle of the road with them, so you're going to have... Um, you know, smaller units, a uh, little less weight, a little less price as far as what you're going to see. Um, you know, a few less standard options. Uh, you know, things are going to become uh, more more option driven. Uh, and then, of course, they do the SE series, which is just a few models that they do as kind of some price leaders. So this is in the uh, the Ultralight series. The, the trailer measures 25 feet 10 inches overall length. And that is a very interesting spec because it's at least two and a half feet shorter than any other floor plan that has everything that this trailer has in it it's at least two and a half feet shorter so that's very interesting to see the way that they did that and i'm going to get to that in just a minute of how that's done uh, the unit is uh, dry weight of 53 5312 pounds a hitch weight of uh, 780 pounds gvrw 7600 this particular color is the uh, granite interior, if you're curious about the color. And um, fresh water tank is going to be 49 gallons. You're going to have a gray water capacity of 33 gallons and a black water of 33 gallons. Your water heater in this is your standard 6-gallon RV gas electric water heater. So that gives you kind of the technical data. Um, again, that's going to 
put you in the tow spec for most every uh, half ton pickup on the market, even into some compact vehicles. Uh, Toyota Tacoma would carry plenty of rating for this particular trailer um, with the tow package and things. I mean, stuff that you're going to see on a Toyota Tacoma in, in Montana, they're going to be tow rated for this. Uh, some of the smaller midsize SUVs will have the tow rating for this as well. So this gets you into a, into a point where, you know, at 5,300 pound dry weight, you'll be you know, 60, 6,200, 6,000, 6,200 down the road when you get your water, your batteries, propane, and your gear in here. So that gives you an idea, you know, into that, you know, six, call it, you know, 6,200 pounds uh, loaded weight is a, kind of what you would expect on an average camping trip with a unit like this. Uh, the 25 foot uh, you know that particular length again. That's very interesting. They get this trailer that short and they've, they've got a pretty cool setup here in the front that I'll show you in just a second how that's done. I'm going to start here at the entry door and I'm going to walk around this unit uh, kind of uh, Clockwise I guess so it gives you just a, a logical look at it So you can see kind of everything throughout the unit right here at the entry door You can see our kitchen jets out straight away and you're going to have your entertainment center, you're going to have some light switches as well as your main uh, control panel right there at the entry door. You have a little storage drawer here as well as a USB charge port and a uh, electrical outlet up above. Up on top, the countertop in this is a thermal wrapped countertop. That is that uh, new material that is uh, half the weight of Corian a quarter of the expense and gives you the same effect where you have that seamless countertop. So that's a nice material. It's been holding up very well in the RV industry. We also got this little flip up counter extension here also to give you a little bit more room in your kitchen. The, the kitchen in this is not wanting for, for countertop space. It really is very good, especially for a unit this size. It's got a nice countertop that goes across the back there. And then of course over here, our Fury on uh, range does have the glass top cover up on it that flips up. It's gonna have the steel grate underneath with the three burn or cooktop and then down below we do have I'm gonna turn the light on here because we have it we have a lighted uh, oven with a window in the door which is something that took the RV industry forever to get seems like a simple thing but it's nice to see uh, stainless steel Furion range hood we also have a Furion uh, stainless steel microwave in this uh, right next to that they do have the TV mounted here right next to the door and that is directly across from the uh, dinette which is right behind me and that is going to give you a pretty good view of the TV we also have a sofa up here in the front I'll show you I'm getting there um, we're just kind of going around this trailer as, as logically as I can uh, this does run a Dometic 8 cubic foot this was upgraded from the 6 cubic which is your standard RV refrigerator uh, this is an 8 cubic foot fridge and um, this is going to be a gas electric. So conventional fridge, but it is the upgrade. Um, it, it's gonna give you that extra capacity, uh, two cubic feet larger than about any other anybody else is doing in this class. Um, again, most ultralights are trying to crimp everywhere they can. Um, you know, and again, this might be a, a tick heavier than your standard refrigerator, but it's not enough to talk about. In the back corner here, we do have uh, double over double bunks, and these are the teddy bear style bunk mattresses. About that, trying to get my hand up there far enough. Down below here, of course, uh, is our bottom bunk. These are both LED lighted. They have windows in both bunks. Um, down below it here, we do have some storage. And we do have an electrical outlet here as well, so if we need to charge something back here, we can do that also. We do have a little bit of storage here underneath this back bunk. <clears throat> In the back corner of the unit here is our bathroom. And this is gonna be kind of your standard small bunkhouse RV bathroom. It's plenty usable. It is fairly small, but it does have a skylight in it. So it adds some natural light and that gives you that, you know, just, it just makes it feel bigger. It's also very light colors throughout. It's a white shower surround. It's a white tub. It's a light toilet. It's a light uh, white sink. And then again, with the uh, the light countertops and then with the, uh, the overhead skylight up there, it doesn't make it feel you know, uh, like a closet. It does feel pretty good. LED lighting up, up overhead here. We do have power roof vent. Um, and you are going to see, of course, that they have the towel hooks built in there on top of the little storage shelf. There is storage here at the back of the vanity in the corner. And they do add a little storage shelf down here because the countertop space in here is fairly small. Um, again, you've got a little bit around the, around the countertop, but it's not going to be huge. Uh, down below, we do have storage here as well. And of course, over here to my left, you're going to see the, uh, that appears to be the uh, Thetford porcelain toilet. 
coming out of the bathroom and moving over here towards the off door wall, we have a little set of storage cabinets here. This is just kind of a three door type of cabinet setup um, down the wall. Just a nice use of the space. They're not wasting it. Um, it is good to see that, uh, you know, RV manufacturers are very good at maximizing the space. In the slide out, this is going to be, of course, the big deep slide out. Um, we're going to have our dinette. This is a U-shaped dinette that's that's mounted into this slide. Um, it is set up here with this uh, table base, and I really like this table base because it's loose from the table. It's very heavy, so this doesn't want to move around very easily, but it is movable. So if you have little kids like I do, and they're every time they're eating, they get all kinds of crumbs on the floor, they will. Uh, you can just slide that table out of the way, run your vacuum through, and it makes it a little easier to clean. I really like that feature in this versus the one with the little silver poles that drop down into the holes in the floor and then those break all the time every time you lean on it so it's nice to see um Again, a little upgrade in an area that maybe you wouldn't expect to see it. Back in the back there, you can see we have little sliding doors to access the back of the storage compartment on that back bench. We also have doors to access storage here on the end of the uh, the end of the cabinet. And you can also see that this unit does have sink covers that just uh, are still in there from travel. They just haven't uh, set them up on the sink, but this unit does come with sink covers. They do have the toe kicks here lighted as well. We have a nice little chandelier up overhead that lights the dining area. And then of course this uh, table does lay down into the benches there to complete. So this will make another bed here and it's gonna be a nice uh, nice long bed. I'm gonna call it about seven feet long. It's probably, oh, three and a half feet wide, something like that. So a nice bed for an adult if you do have company that, uh, that needs to stay with you. Um, right next to the dinette, you're going to see these nice big deep storage bins. And we call it maybe a pantry type of thing and that one's got some shelves down in the bottom there to give you a little bit more options now up in the front this is where this unit gets pretty interesting so this is what we would call in the in the rv industry a murphy bed system uh it and it is uh, quite an interesting um, setup. It is maximizing the space. So, so most of the time in a, in a unit like this, this size, this length, you're only going to get a U-shaped dinette in the slide out, a queen bed in the front that's walk around in the bunks in the back. This one has the bed that folds up here into the front wall and underneath it folds out a sofa. Now this, you're probably not going to have this sofa up every single day that you're using your camper. But the day that you do come in and it's raining or you know, you're just, it's late and everybody wants to come in and just hang out, maybe watch a movie, you've got this little sofa where you can fold your bed up and have a little extra entertaining space in a unit that is very short. And that is still, you know, at a nice little angle here to the, uh, to the sofa is your TV. So you can still kind of access all that. On each side of the sofa, we do have uh, electrical outlets as well as USB ports, uh, charge ports on both sides. Down below here, we've got storage that goes underneath the sofa. We've got a storage drawer as well as a hanging cabinet on either side of the, uh, the bed where the bed folds in and out. And these will come all the way out. And of course, these are ball bearing roller guides, uh, plywood boxes on all the drawers. And then of course, up above, we've got another little storage cabinet. Now, I am doing this all with one hand because I'm filming with the other, so just bear with me here, but I'm gonna show you how this lays out into the bed configuration, which is how you'd probably leave it until you had company coming into the unit. Um, on a normal day, I'm sure you just leave the bed down with all the bedding made, but you have this option in this unit is kind of the point that we're making here. The sofa does have this little fold down cup holder in it, which is nice. So that just folds up. We're gonna lay the sofa down into a flat configuration. And I just have one of these latched, but there is a, there's a travel latch on either side of the bed. And that will lay down just like that. And just that quickly, we have a full-size queen bed up in the front of our unit. That is also going to expose our front automotive-style windshield that Coachman is uh, kind of becoming known for here. But it's it's a really interesting system that they're using. Of course, we have a shade on that front window. We also have reading lights mounted on both sides. But it's a very interesting system that they're using here to be able to utilize these smaller trailers um, and lighter weight towing capabilities and still have some room for additional company. I really like what they've done with it. I think it's a very interesting idea. It's the only complaint I really have with the unit is a little bit tight right here walking in. 
um, when you are you know in the bed down configuration but again I would rather they keep the trailer a foot shorter than try to make this longer here for, for really no reason this is usable it may feel a little tight but I think it's, it's plenty usable for the average person that's gonna buy a unit like this I think they'll appreciate the shorter length I'm gonna go ahead and st step outside we'll walk around the outside of the 238 here um, we are right up on the street here at Rocky Mountain I've got the big muff on the on the microphone so I think you'll be able to hear me just fine but we will have some additional noise out here today um, it is an absolutely beautiful bluebird day here in Montana but it, it's still as you can probably see up there in the mountains to the south they're still pretty white so the uh, the winter weather has not completely let go of us here but it's sure feeling like it's getting there hopefully we'll be able to get back up to our mountain filming location here in the very near future to uh, to get you guys out of this uh, city environment to look at RVs in a little prettier place but I'll tell you this for a dealership Rocky Mountain's got a pretty good view here they've got a great uh, a great setup so uh, like most of the Freedom Expresses and we've done several Coachman Freedom Expresses now I'm uh, again I just keep coming back to this product line because it is very very unique it's very well done uh, judging by the amount of views we get on these videos you guys must like them as well uh, either that or I'm the only guy doing them one of the two so uh, but but again we're back here looking at the front cap of the Freedom Express this is gonna be a three-quarter front fiberglass cap it is done in white we have a little bit of lighting on each side of the windshield the windshield gives it a very unique uh, look to the exterior down below that we're gonna have the diamond rock guard that runs across the, the front of the unit. Um, and that's just, you know, you, kind of your standard aluminum diamond pipe, but that's changeable. Uh, if it does get rock dinged up, we can change those out and um, you're not dealing with fiberglass repair and that kind of thing. So it's it's a nice uh, kind of replaceable sacrificial piece down the road, if you will. Up on the very front of the unit, this one is equipped with a power tongue jack. Uh, and this is just your standard LCI up down uh, lighted power tongue jack. Right behind that, we have our 20 pound LP tanks. Uh, and that is two of those. And then right behind that, of course, there is gonna be the space to mount the batteries. Rocky Mountain mounts two batteries on all of their bigger models like this that will fit two batteries. So they're going to put two Group 24 interstate batteries is what they've been using for the last 25 years. So I'm sure they'll probably keep doing that. But um, that's kind of what you're looking at there. We do have battery disconnect key over there. That's that little red key so we can turn our batteries off when they're in storage. Uh, that way you don't come back to dead batteries every time. It's a very nice factory feature. If you don't have that on your RV, I highly recommend you put one on. Up here in the front compartment, you can see the uh, uh, this is the the full pass-through front storage and you can see a little bit of the uh the aluminum structure i'm sorry i'm trying to get that box out of the way there but a little bit of the uh, aluminum structure that coachman uses it's a welded aluminum structure and then they overlay it with uh with the luon of course to complete the interior very nice look we have uh full led light strip up here on the front with some with some switches here to turn those on and off and then of course the big doors on both sides this unit does come with this little coleman grill here i'm sorry trying to get a, a decent shot of this um, it does come with this little coleman grill here as well and that's something that uh, that coachman's doing this year it's uh, it's an interesting idea with these outside kitchens you have that little grill that you can use and i think it's a nice feature right down here underneath you can see of course the uh Scissor stabilizer jacks, these are four manual crank downs on each corner. I really prefer this system personally. Um, I think the uh, manual stab jacks, you put the adapter on your little uh, cordless drill for five bucks and you can run these, these jacks down in about 30 seconds, all four of them. And uh, you know, again, if you do happen to bend one, which happens in Montana and drag it on a, on a rock or uh, you know, through going through a hump or a bump, uh, it, very in, inexpensive and easy to replace. If you have the power, t the power stab jacks are expensive, they're a little slower to operate and if you bend one they are super expensive to change down underneath of course you can see the full enclosed heated underbelly that uh, freedom express has had since its inception it's a very nice clean look underneath the unit i forgot to mention that they do mount the uh, spare tire up underneath the front of the trailer which i kind of like that too it keeps it off the bumper keeps the overall length a little shorter um, it's just one of those things that uh, small details but it's uh, it's nice to see up overhead we have the uh, power awning that runs the full length of the trailer this is a nice big awning it also has um, the led light strip that runs the full length right up against the wall there with the sunlight it's kind of hard to see that but it is there uh, power uh, excuse me uh, exterior speakers on this side as well at the entry door there we do have the large assist grab handle we have the LCI solid step that comes right down to the ground gives you a very positive and solid feel as you walk up into the unit coachman their uh, mascot for years has been the uh, the little Dalmatian here on the front 
for the last 40 or 50 years. That's been their mascot. So they've started doing this little leash holder here next to the door, which has uh, the little bone to hold the leash and has the dog print uh, um, uh, you know, etched into it there. And that also opens, uh, doubles as a bottle opener. So that's kind of an interesting little feature there on the side of the unit. I like that. I like to see they're uh, incorporating their mascot into part of their unit. Uh, down here on the, on the axle set, you're going to see five lug alloy aluminum wheels with radial tires mounted on there. This is a wide track axle design. So you can see the tires are spread apart there and that's gonna, gonna carry a little bit additional weight on the chassis of the trailer versus on the truck so it lightens the tongue weight. It also adds some sway control in by having those further apart. It's harder to uh, have this trailer sway. The only downside of that is you do scrub tires a little bit quicker when you're turning, but in the RV world, generally the sun gets the tires long before they're ever worn out anyway. You'll see this checks in the sidewall. So normally that's not much of an issue. I I like the wide track i think it's a good system uh been on the market for quite a few years and uh been used with a lot of success the little outside kitchen here at the back corner is underneath that rear bunk and uh, that's just going to give you a little sink a storage drawer here that comes out and that's going to have kind of a uh, utensil setups you can have your uh, spatulas and your all your extra stuff out here some some plastic wear or whatever for cooking outside a spot to wash your hands how invaluable is that when we're out camping we've been playing in the fire and the dirt and the out fishing and everything else and you come back be able to wash your hands before you walk in i really like the outside sink we do have a little bit of storage back in here behind the uh the faucet and then we do have of course the little small electric only refrigerator i do always mention that that is electric only that is not going to give you um, refrigeration if you're not plugged into power. So again, that can always be pulled out, used at your house. You can use that for additional storage. You can even put a cooler in there. I, it actually looks like about a 45 quart Yeti would fit right there. So that's just uh, one of those ideas uh, that that's out there that you can uh, you can maybe make your trailer a little bit more more uh, backwoods ready when you pick it up. On the back of the trailer, you're going to see the uh, rear ladder that goes up on the roof. I'm a huge proponent to stay off the roof of your trailer. This one has the ladder on it. I wish they would stop doing that, but it's there. Um, it's so easy to damage a roof up there with a uh, rock in your shoe or go up there when it's frosty or a little bit of snow on top. It's very easy to fall off and damage yourself. I've seen that happen a lot. So use a lot of caution if you're going up on the roof of your trailer. Uh, at the back here, we do have our, our water heater service access as well as our city water connection. Up above there is going to be the Furion backup camera prep mounted right there below the light. The the camera doesn't come with the trailer, but it is prepped for it, so you can buy the camera, just simply plug it in. It's very simple and easy to use. Sewer connections here on the back corner of the trailer, much as you would expect. It is tucked up nice and tight to the frame, though, so we're not going to have it down there where it's going to drag. The rear tail of this unit is also very short, so it shouldn't have uh, drag issues. It should be very, uh, very good that way. Your 30 amp power connection is here on the back corner, as well as the outside shower. That is a hot, cold, and that's an invaluable little piece if you've got a dog like I do. Of course, you've probably seen Macy if you've been around my video as much. She's our little mascot, um, but she likes to get out in the mud and, and dig for gophers and everything else and gets all kinds of filthy. So a little hot, cold exterior is nice for that, or wash a cooler out, whatever you might be doing. Um, your, your cable and satellite hookups are right here as well as the black tank flush it's nice to see that they're signifying that black tank flush with a an, an orange um connector on it now we've had a lot of people uh that have hooked their hose to that thinking it was the city water connection turned the faucet on walked away from their trailer and flooded the interior of their rv through the toilet because they, they flooded the tank. Um, so that's one of those things you do gotta be careful of. It's really nice to see that they're doing that to make sure that people are trying to, uh, to not, uh, trying to try have that not happen. Uh, your, your gravity fill for your water tank is right here. This is still a gravity system, so you can pour an additional uh, jug of water into your trailer if you need it. It's right there and available for that. Coming back up to the front, you do see your off-door storage door there. But once again, that's the uh, the Coachman 238 Freedom Express in the ultralight lineup. It's a great looking little trailer. It's uh, very innovative for a, for a small camper. I think if you had a, a little bit of a limited towing capability uh, with your vehicle, that would be one heck of a nice little family camper that still gives you some versatility when you're out there. So again, we thank Rocky Mountain RV for uh, letting us come out and play with their inventory today. It's a beautiful bluebird day in Southwest Montana. Uh, please take a look at this one. I will link to it uh, in the description. Uh, all of their units are at their website, rockymtnrv.com. We'll, we'll show you all of their inventory, about 200 trailers in stock. Thanks again from the Happy Camper. We appreciate you watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and happy camping.